let's get started. So first things first, um, John, thank you for being up here with me. I'm uh, really excited to chat with you about all the things going on with House of Boxing, um, as well as talk a little bit about uh, just a, a few things you guys have coming up, as well as the um, sports and gaming just in general ecosystem in Web3, because I know this is something a lot of people have their eyes on. And myself being a, a huge fan of playing sports from back in the day, you know, I am Canadian, so hockey is very, very deep in my blood. So I'm excited to chat with you about something that I actually really love and can't wait to see evolve in the space. Um, but to get things started here, I do just want to let everybody know who is listening. Um, really appreciate you guys hanging out. Once again, if you guys can, drop us a like and a retweet on the space. Now, just to let you guys know ahead of time, we do not have any official reward section for questions that are dropped in there. But if anything comes up or you have any questions that you want to ask myself or um, John over here from the House of Boxing team, I'll throw it in there and we'll be keeping our eyes on it and make sure to let you guys know uh, what we think if you have some interesting questions. Um, but without further ado, you guys know me, I'm Guru, I'm always up here chatting and hosting spaces for Earn Alliance. I have the Earn Alliance page beside me, thank you guys for setting up this space. And then of course on the other side, I have the House of Boxing page, and uh, I believe it is uh, Joan there on the other side chatting with me, right? So Joan, feel free to take the stage, um, give yourself or tell the guests a little bit about who you are, and maybe just drop a little bit of info introducing House of Boxing for those who might not be familiar. Yeah, of course, no, and, and thanks for, for having me. Um, you know, I think we we jumped on on, a, on an AMA a couple of weeks ago as well, and um, it was great to chat uh, chatting about community and how to bring it alive, um, and, and so on. So um, happy to be here again and and chat about um, house of boxing and other things that we're doing um, in order to um, become the destination for the next generations of sports fans in general. No. And so, in that sense, um, as a uh, as a brief intro on my end, no? so I'm Joan. I'm the founder and CEO of Vetralast. I'm an engineer by background. Started my career in finance in JP Morgan investment banking team and worked in private equity afterwards. Um, I decided to make a shift in my career and join the gaming industry by um, joining the Scopely uh, team, helping them grow organically and organically as part of their business development and strategic, strategic team. And as part of that role is where I became the person leading um, the blockchain gaming force, um, where is where the entire um, idea for, for Etrolast came, came alive. No? Um, so yeah, that's a bit about myself. I'm happy to um, intro a, a bit of House of Boxing and, and what we're doing in general at Etrolast. Um, and, and so in that sense, you know, from an Etrolast perspective, we are a gaming studio. Um, we are effectively building the destination, as mentioned before, for the next generation of sports fans. And so we understand that gaming is the number one fan engagement tool today for um, in sports. And in order to tackle the new generation of sports fans, we need to do it through gaming. And so in that sense, we have started um, with House of Boxing. Um, as we understand, it was a, a good um, sport to, to start with as it was an underpenetrated sport with a very uh, very big digital audience as well with um, with with a lack of as well of, of products and value propositions to their fans. You know? and, so, um, and so in that sense, uh, the product that the product that that, that we build is mainly uh, focused in three core areas. Uh, very shortly, not to put it in summary, um, the first the first pillar is based on um, the predictive tournaments that um, players are able to compete on a weekly basis um, uh, across um, the major boxing um, fights that are happening every weekend. Um, and in that sense, um, we're reshaping kind of the global perception as well of, of sports predictions in general, because at the end of the day, we're removing the financial risk as you can pay for free um, and you can effectively uh, win rewards on a weekly basis. No? And so we're making sports predictions more fun and social. Um, and in that sense, our ethos is effectively to try to unite fans through the, um, this activity. No? This is kind of the first pillar of our product. The the second pillar effectively tries to mitigate one of the main challenges that predictions have. 
which is that um, predictions tend to have an, a lack of emotional attachment um, uh, from the user to the game. You know? And so in that sense, normally players come in, make their predictions and leave. Um, and so something that we wanted to, to solve was that to create that bridge and that emotional attach, attachment. Um, and so we decided to add um, um, uh, avatars where effectively you, you could interact with the avatar and play with the avatar to earn um, a specific in-game asset, which were coins that can allow you to effectively predict on a weekly basis. And so we have realized that by adding this component, um, players get much more engaged with the product. They rather than coming once a week, they come every day. And effectively, um, and there is a, a, a bigger emotional attachment to, to, to the game itself. No? And the last pillar after commenting the predictive um, pillar and then the avatars, the third pillar is effectively um, the win, win real life rewards, no? uh, where basically users are getting ranked in the predictive tournaments and effectively um, they're opting for win real life rewards on a week to week basics, ba uh, basis in order to um, compete for the top spots in the leaderboard. No? So, yeah, that's kind of who we are in a, in a briefly a bit of how our product works um, in general. No? Appreciate it, John. I, I can understand already. And uh, I mean, this doesn't come as any surprise to people who are familiar with the genre, but um, it's it's a complex system. And I believe that um, it, it only sounds complex, really, in theory. I think once people are in it, it flows very well. But I understand there's a lot to unpack when it comes to the way that you guys are actually integrating those multiple verticals. Because I feel like for the longest time, there's been um, a variety of different ways that people get involved with sports as a game. Um, there's obviously the fantasy football side or just fantasy sports in general, right? For me, it was a lot of football because I'm from uh, I'm from North America. But um, I know that people are huge on this and this is one area, but there's there's more to it than that. There's a lot more. There's the people who do want to get a little bit more engaged. Those people tend to be people who honestly buy all those, uh, all the NFLs, all the FIFAs, everything that comes out every year because they love it. And I like that you guys are trying to create like a, a dynamic ecosystem that really blends it together in a novel way. And, you know, I think that's what Web3 really unlocks. So I'm excited to see how it pans out. You know, I think the the fact of being able to add that immutable and um, and really publicly owned asset aspect to to sports gaming is uh, is awesome. So I def definitely wish you guys the best. And I know you have your work cut out for you because there's a lot of people who believe this is one of the areas that's going to be potentially most successful in Web3. Um, so thanks again. Once again, I know there's a lot, there's a lot, but I appreciate it, John. So actually speaking of, um, you know, host of boxing and all that is going on, I want to give you guys a chance, especially since uh, it's just me and you up here on the stage is I want you to talk a little bit about, um, some of the developments or just some of the updates that maybe have been coming, um, in the last little bit that are like big milestones you guys hit or, um, coming soon that you really want to bring up. Cause I know you guys are working on a lot. So tell us a little bit more about the things that have recently happened and some of the exciting stuff that you guys have coming yeah, no, up ahead. 100%. So, and, and by the way, I, I completely feel you when you talk about your sports, um, fandom and so on. Um, you know, I'm from Barcelona and so, I, I have deeply rooted on myself kind of the sports fandom attached to the football club Barcelona um, and everything that happens around it. So, yeah, I, I ultimately, um, and just touching briefly on, on what you mentioned before and around the new generation of fans and so on, um, we ultimately understand that there is a new exciting form of fandom engagement um, today, you know, and so if you look at um, younger fans, um, there is not a specific local fandom attached to one specific club or one specific local area, but it's more of a fandom across geographies and across sports. Um, and, and there is a part around the short attention span that as well many people talk about um, and how social media has allowed to have a much more of a social experience across across the sports themselves. Um, and so we understand that um, in order to be able to solve this kind of pride of value proposition that is more attractive to users, we need to put something that resonates with today's fandom, which 
Brad is mainly three main pillars, which is free to play, casual gaming, social life, sports competitions, and the third one, which is winning real life rewards. Um, so, but yeah, like in, just touching kind of on the, your second point, which was around like on the the our updates um, and and effectively where we are heading. So up to up to now, um, you know, we are we have launched our first product, which was House of Boxing, which ultimately has helped us a lot and is helping us a lot to understand whether the value proposition that we're bringing to the market um, is something that users um, enjoy and, and appreciate and kind of, and whether that can be the, even be extrapolated across all major sports, right? And so for us, um, up to now, we have been releasing certain updates um, on, on the product around um, more the, the casual gaming experience or the predictive and the predictive competitions, um, and even more recently, we have dropped um, what we call the the origins pack or the origins drop, which all the owners of uh, owning these um, uh, the assets from this drop we have massive advantage in the future um, and within not only boxing but across all major sports we will be including, um, and that is actually running for an entire month, um, the collection. So in that sense, um, that's something that we did last last week and, um, you know, had a, a major success across our community. And um, we have seen that people are loving it. Effectively, we have introduced um, basically uh, all major fights from boxing uh, as part of in-game assets. So we have created an, in, an in-game asset called the Booster, which effectively um, packages uh, legendary fights from um, the last 20, 30 years from Mike Tyson, Tyson Fury, Ricky Hatton, well, boxing legends in general. Um, and effectively, owners of these boosters um, not only are able to use it uh, to boost their predictions and to have access to the pro tournaments, where, where are the real life rewards, but also they are owning a piece of history as well because they are owning one entire round of uh, video slash footage of officially licensed content or, uh, from one of the promoters, which is Queensberry now. They effectively own, you can own effectively like a, an entire round of Mike Tyson's um, fight from the last 20 years. So. That's awesome, by the way. I think that's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we thought it, it was like people were gonna appreciate it. Um, I, mean, I we know we know that we are not in the bull run, which would might have been like something that people would would have gone crazy um, at that point in time. But we just wanted to, you know, add it as part of the kind of um, a thrill of uh, being part of the early community. Um, and so now people can own it, um, which I think is pretty cool. It's the first time that people can own like an entire like an entire round of a boxing match of Mike Tyson or Tyson Fury and so on. So, um, so yeah. That's awesome. I love that. And, you know, just to touch on your point a little bit about uh, how well it would have done in the, in the bull run. I know if you followed um, boxing and sports in the bull run, you probably know of this and it's a bit of a unfortunate thing to admit. But uh, if you followed anything that Mayweather did during the bull run, although all of them were, very poorly received uh, they did very well price wise so i can understand completely people would have been all over it but uh, that's why of course we have a bear market is because things like that were really taking up the focus and liquidity and they were not that great for the space i um, hoping to and honestly very confident in the fact that what you guys are putting forward is going to be a much more well-rounded um, ecosystem overall right there's a lot more use for what you're putting out into the space it's not just fundraising there's going to be a lot of value felt and uh and given back to to the to the owners and the participators so i'm um, looking forward to that you know yeah. speaking of that yeah. as well i really wanted to touch on um those participators in general with you um go ahead if you had something to say feel free no no i i i, I think you you summarized for quite well um, but i wanted yeah. the lag in the front? i think i might be a little bit i think I think we're lagging some. Like, let me let me let me um, reconnect real quick. Um, no worries, no worries, no worries. Do your thing. Do your thing. 
in the meantime, when we're uh, if we're waiting for you to reconnect really quick, I do just want to mention once more um, with everybody who's here, because I know you guys obviously have been listening. I'm really excited to get um, John's opinion coming back here for the topic I was just bringing up, because I'm going to ask him a little bit about um, the digital fan base in general and who's actually involved and, and wanting to get involved. So we'll wait for him to jump back in. Um, but I was just going to remind you guys. Because, of course, we really appreciate you listening. But if you can also do us a quick favor and go like and retweet the space, just repost it so that we can get more people's eyes on here, that would be great. Um, doing a voice check, John. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Everything's fine. Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. So um, back to what I was going to ask you. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the user base and the fan base around um specifically digitally around around the world here because i know when it comes to sports specifically um and especially sports gaming there are so many participators this is by far one of the most successful um forms of gaming in the world you know whether it be fantasy sports whether it be direct like there's just so much out there so um i wanted to know from your point of view like What kind of opportunities are there for sports games, and especially when it comes to sports games in Web3, which is even more difficult um, to leverage that technology and be able to reach the audience? Like, what is it you think or what is it you're doing to try and tap into that massive audience that's out there? Yeah, I think there are, I think, you know, sports gaming um, is increasingly even having, I would say, um, bigger presence in gaming in general. Um, I think especially with fantasy gaming being unlocked as well in the in the US at a broader scale, I think it's becoming a hot even a hot a hot topic um, um, in general. Um, so in our case, the way we think about sports gaming, um, I would say maybe in, in three in I would put different propositions in three buckets. Um, the first one would be traditional free-to-play casual fantasy gaming, um, uh, which, you know, you would align just your theme, you would play with your friends, and you would just earn really bragging rights, really, <laughs> against your friends, you know? Um, that is, that, that, those type of propositions have been massively successful over the years, um, and they have gathered um, millions of users um, as the, it is a scalable product that, you know, it has low friction. Um, player users understand the proposition, um, and it's a very social um, social game. No? The major issue that these value propositions have is monetization. Um, there's, it's very difficult to monetize um, these type of value propositions um, because you cannot add really any elements around um, traditional gaming um, elements to it, as you don't want to destroy the game economy or. Uh, imbalance the game in favor of certain users. No? So it's difficult to monetize. It, it has been always a challenge around monetizing, monetizing this type of, 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 of um, a, a type of game. So this, the second bucket, I would, I would say they are the more the AAA um, uh, sport games such as, you know, uh, FIFA, um, uh, 2K or, um, you know, uh, you know, all the different, let's say, EA proposition, electronic arts propositions um, and games, which effectively are more for, you know, hardcore audiences um, and, and for more intense kind of gameplay, um, which have been massively successful. And, and we believe it is, they will still be massively successful over time. No? And then there are the third gaming propositions, which I would say they are more like real money gaming than anything else. I mean, they are more just like betting propositions, which is more the drafting or fan duels of the worlds, if that makes sense. So those types of players are they have smaller user bases, but they have this they have massive monetization, um, monetization conversions. No, um, obviously. So um, what I think the the, the challenge is. Um, is how do we create um, as well like a fantasy gaming experience um, that it's it is a social is a social as traditional fantasy, but at the same time um, uh, it, it is it is something that can be monetized and can and the users can enjoy um, over time and there is in depth um, a, a, a depth of experience within it. Um, and so, with it, and so effectively, there is a gap currently in the market between 
those type of free to play kind of propositions and then this space was downloaded via spacesdown.com visit to download your spaces today um they're actually the draftings of the world if that makes sense um and so in that area in between is where for example so rare um the uh, fan- the web3 fantasy um giant french giant no um they have been able to effectively come in and put their value proposition which is quite attractive um and, and so in that sense they have been able to prove a model that is free to play but at the same time you are able to have skin in the game by owning your assets and effectively um have access to real life rewards and that's something that it, it has resonated quite well as a first as a first iteration and so we are aiming to um to follow kind of the steps of um uh, that that this initial proposition from Sorrel has put out there but more around the prediction side of side of things you know where effectively um users can pay for free it's a social experience but at the same time um uh, players can own their own in game assets um that I enable them to have skin in the game and as well um, be able to use their skill and knowledge from a specific sport to effectively um uh, earn value on a recurring basis without effectively um, going down the rabbit hole of a betting or a gambling kind of a route, which is effectively something that has massive friction and it's not really kind of in, in, in when you talk into really gaming, you know? Um, and so uh, the the piece where for, for us is super interesting is how Web3 kind of and blockchain new assets can help to create a model that effectively can allow um, can allow uh, users to not only own their own in-game assets, but effectively get um, value out of all their skill and knowledge from the sports that they follow and that they love, if that makes sense. Right? Yeah, definitely. And actually, um, it, it gets close to answering a question that was asked in the thread here by uh, one of our, our well-known great question askers, actually, um, JDW, J, J. Dong Wu. Um, and I'm just going to elaborate a little bit more because I like his question. And I think that you're touching on a similar point, which is, um, you know, the correlation between sports gaming, which a lot of people have two very large opinions on either being engaging AAA games, you know, like the EA um, plethora of games they put out. But on the other side is uh, gambling, betting, right? So um, he actually asked specifically about your opinion on sports being linked to that. And I think you started talking about it. So I really want to know your point of view of like, when it comes down to Web3 and sports, you know, there is by design a monetary aspect to Web3. And incorporating the two does end up putting a little bit more um, risk and, of course, association on that. So what is your opinion, um, John, about, um, you know, sports and betting and gambling? And what is that fine line? Or do you think it's a friction point? Do you think there is, you know, there's some merit there? And that's why Web3 fits so well with sports, because people like to associate it. I just would love to hear a little bit more of your thoughts on that, because I think that's an interesting topic people are curious about. Is web three sports gaming essentially betting gambling or you know is it more than that and if it is how is it more than that no it's a, I, I believe it's a great question um let me maybe go back for um on like how everything came to fruition i mean in terms of why we think this value proposition is something interesting or i thought it was interesting which comes down really to my own experience as a sports fan um you know when i was uh, uh not that long, long long time ago like i've always been and gone to uh the camp now with my dad um ever since no um and he's been yeah, i'm a hooligan but he's even a bigger hooligan than i am um and so he's been following the club for um, I don't know, over 50 years or 60 years now and going, not missing a single match. Um, and and one day he actually, um, uh, he lost his um, ID to enter into the Camp Nou and we went to the, to the office to effectively have, uh, to get another one, a, a copy. Um, and 
basically when they realized that he he was a member of the club for over 50 years um they were just like oh yeah great con congratulations you you you've been here for over 50 years and for me that was mind blowing because you know um fans that we give it all to our clubs to our um to the athletes that we love we change our routines to to follow them almost they they it is kind of a one way relationship right and it's because they don't, they don't get to know us really um or even know who their custom, who who their fan base really is and, and who are their super fans um, and so we wanted to solve that that frustration that my dad, my dad and I have, right? Um, by giving back value to um, to the fans. And so, in that sense, we decided to put forward a proposition that allow you to effectively remove all the financial risk attached to. Um, to the gaming experience itself by having a free-to-play experience and at the same time enabling users to, by owning specific assets, enabling them to access um, competitions where by putting their knowledge and know-how um, at play, they could be rewarded for their fandom. You know? um, whether it's with monetary rewards, but with experiences, um, and anything that 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 fans actually value, you know. Um, and so, in that in that sense, the reason why as well we thought it was it, it was it was needed a value proposition like this, it was because specifically because of the current value propositions out in the market, which were mainly as well kind of the betting propositions. Where or gambling propositions, where effectively, you know, in order to get anything out of um, out of uh, out of any betting company, you need to put a bet in <laughs> to start with, you know. And so, in that sense, we want uh, uh, you, you don't get anything back if you don't actually put something um, uh, a monetary bet or something like that, you no. Know? Um, and so, we we didn't want to fall within that category. Um, at all, um, and I actually wanted to uh, use the skill um, and the know-how of fans to play a role on a free-to-play experience, um, and, and using normal and traditional gaming loops, uh, free-to-play gaming loops, to effectively give back to users um, on a on a on an ongoing basis. You know? um, and so. So I think it is a niche area that is kind of in between the pure betting kind of angle um, and a free-to-play um, pure kind of proposition that has been out there for the last 10, 15 years. And so Web3 is enabling this, this new area that has been completely, um, completely uh, empty for the last you know, 10, 15 years as well now. And so we are trying to put out there something that um, resonates with, with with users in in that sense, no? touching those three pillars: free to play, social, and real life rewards. I like that. I like that a lot. I think you explain it very well, but it it, it does make sense. You know, I I thought a lot about the fact that Web three um, does offer a layer of financialization, but. Um, it, it really does make sense that you guys are obviously approaching it from a point of there is nothing forced, like there's no forced financialization, right? Where there definitely is in betting, you're not getting involved unless you're putting money forward. So I think um, you bring up a really good point, And that definitely makes sense to me. I hope that helps explain things to some of the people who are listening here. I think it is very important to uh, make this something where the value proposition is clear and there is a financialization that you can get involved with, obviously, a little bit more um, comfortably than you could in traditional betting. 
and you give people that option, but you don't force them into it. So I'm excited to see how it how it pans out because there's still, of course, just the general value of the experience and the engagement. Um, and speaking of experiences, um, I know you guys actually have something pretty um, pretty awesome up in the uh i I actually don't know if it's started yet or if it's coming soon but i i know you guys have the origin special season um that i'd love to hear a little bit more about because i know you guys have the origin edition i believe that they're boosters um or no sorry it's an event and it's associated to people being able to get obviously those iconic those iconic fights so um it's one of the things that i know is is really awesome i'm really excited to see exactly what you guys have and who ends up getting their hands on what um, but feel free to tell us a little bit more about it. Like how, obviously, it's it, it. This is something that has just recently happened, right? So what's uh, what's what's on the le- or what's on the um, timeline now with this, and um, how do people best get involved if they're interested? Yeah. So, like as you said, it's something that it's a real life. Um, it's an event that effectively is running for an entire month, um, where effectively um, you can get um, you can own. Um, by just going to houseofboxing.com uh, one of our, our main game assets which are boosters um, and, and effectively we have created this, this origin season which effectively um, uh, we have included within this season in particular um, some of the best um, uh, some of the best boxers in history so now you are able to we have put it out there to players to be able to own either a, 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 a Mac Tyson um, a, a Mac Tyson booster or a Rick Hadden booster and so on, which effectively the boosters contain um, mainly give give you three elements of value. The first one effectively um, is the in-game utility. So any booster gives you access to um, the pro tournaments where effectively you can earn real life rewards on a week to week basis. The second piece is around um, the how the boosters interact with your predictions, which effectively, by they, as the name says, they boost your predictions. As they have specific traits that if you align those boosters um, with your predictions, they can give you a strategic advantage versus other other players. And then the third one is around the special element around the origin season which effectively each booster contains an officially licensed um footage footage slash video of one entire round of legendary fights of of all these names that we were we were being mentioning now so um you can own an entire round of ricky hatton or of, of prince and Sim or mike tyson or tyson fury um and many others um, and you can effectively collect them. You can um, play with play, play with them. And even during this period, of, during this month, we're running a, a competition with our com- with our community that, um, similar to the Panini stickers, um, uh, to those ones that we have, uh, we have been um, fortunate enough to play with the Panini stickers in the album of the Panini stickers. Um, we can effectively, we have done a similar competition where the more um, boosters um, related to specific fights that we have released that you own, um, we can give you as well rewards um, in the form of cash or in the form of in-game assets um, uh, by right. just collecting. Did we, uh, did we lose you boosters. or did we lose me? I'm just curious. Ryan, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me here? Okay, it might be it might be on your end. Can you hear me still, Joan? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. I think you cut out for a little bit right at the end there. We it, maybe about three four seconds ago, you went robots right as you were starting a sentence. So I actually don't remember exactly what the sentence okay. is. <laughs> so, yeah, no. So basically, I was just saying I was talking about the competition that we're running with our community right now. That if you just pass like own the one stickers of these origin boosters. Yeah, you can effectively um, now like uh, effectively compete for this competition where effectively if you own um, a, one rarity of, for each one of the fights that we have put out there for sale, um, we can we give you rewards in the form of in-game assets or cash and so on. So you can, we're, we're as well giving um, not only access to in-game utility, but as well and the Collectivity, a collectivity part of it as well. We are we're rewarding users to, that are collecting 
and are obtaining some of these assets. I like I like it that's really supposed to work. It's uh, you appreciate the people who are of course participating and and using the technology. So really happy to hear you guys are doing that. And honestly, um, I'm sure that some of the rewards they get are going to be like really awesome, um, it, it, just beyond monetary. But I'm sure that you guys have some things planned to really make. People feel like they got uh, got everything. Hi guys, did you do you hear me? Yeah, John. Uh, I think Max is uh, just having some uh, some technical issues, but um, he'll be back. Okay. Hey guys, Max is just uh, fixing his connection. Yep. Awesome. Yep. He'll be back in. Uh, a few seconds, here, you guys. Here he is. Hello. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I'm sure I cut no off problem. in the middle of a tangent, but um, that's all right because I prefer to give you the stage anyway. And I do want to ask you, um, just in closing, because I know we're getting to the end here. We're only going to run about 30 minutes for this, but I, I, it's been a great time chatting with you. Um, John, I want to hear a little bit more just I want to give you a chance to talk more about what the future of gaming in Web3 or Web3 sports and the future of how boxing looks like, just to give people um, just maybe a little bit of alpha or some stuff to look forward to, uh, and then maybe a bit of your opinion on what you think that future is going to look like and how you want House of Boxing and, of course, Adderlass Gaming to be um, participating in that. I think sports will, the future sports will go through, um, it's, it will pass 100% through gaming. So gaming will play a massive role in the engagement of sports. Um, and effectively, the sports itself will need to integrate gaming and the gaming mechanics as part of the entire um, experience itself. You know? um, more and more, we're seeing that the new generations interact with gaming as part of their life um and even even though you, even we can see it right now with even consumer apps traditional consumer apps in education in healthcare in many other sectors gaming is becoming a part gamifying all experiences is part of the entire um a user experience you know? and so sports is not going to be less than that and so in that sense we believe that um there is massive room for effectively um, put out their value propositions that resonate with the new generation of sports fans that um, and that align with their needs and that can give back to the fans you know, uh, by providing a social, a fan experience that emotionally attaches the the fans with the sport. You know? And so in that sense, that's how we want to, like, that's how we are seeing um, uh, the direction of, of House of Boxing and Natural Arts itself. You know? House of Boxing for us is just the very first stepping stone. Um, and thanks to our lovely community and the um, massive community that is giving us feedback constantly, uh, which I, need, I have to thank a um, hundred times uh, to all our community that how much value they're giving us to put out there a product that is valuable, that is engaging. Um, House of Boxing has enabled us to learn a ton of things. But House of Boxing is just the first stepping stone of the road. That's we're effectively aiming to become the next sport giant. And the way we, we want to do it is by creating um, the, the, ne the destination for the next generation of, sport, uh, of fans by bringing all sports together to one and an always on social gaming experience. And so our next stage for us is 
uh, bringing House of Boxing as part of a bigger ecosystem where effectively we'll be having all major sports, um, football, basketball, American football, tennis, golf, and so on, all in one single place and effectively um, uh, being mobile first as well. You know? And we believe that Web3 can play a significant role in this part by providing the, te the technology and that enables a new user experience where effectively can bring back, give back value to the fans. No? So yeah, um, and so we will be announcing kind of the roadmap for the for 2024 soon, uh, which as well will effectively include um, kind of the integration of House of Boxing into this wider spectrum of sports a bigger in a bigger universe, and how the holders of the origins drop will have a, a, a massive benefits across all sports, um, taking into account that they've been one, the first, um, the first, uh, the first in the line. And the ones that have shaped as well the future of the product um, since the very beginning. I love it. I, I wish you guys the absolute best on it because I'm really, really excited um, to see the future of Sports Web 3 Gaming. And I think that um, the only way it's going to truly realize that future is if there's enough passion in the people who are building towards it. And I can I can definitely tell that there's a lot of passion in you. I mean, it exists in your dad. I can't believe he, he was he was a part of the club for 50 years. That's mind boggling. But, um, you know, I can understand it because my dad's been the exact same way when it comes to football. Um, so he loves it so much. But John, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, we're probably going to be wrapping up the space because I think at this point in time, um, I just don't want to chance any more technical difficulties on my end. But um, and it was fantastic chatting with you about everything happening, but I just want to let everybody know as well. Um, of course, there is the origin special season that's been running with House of Boxing. You guys have a lot of things going on. Um, I believe that we will obviously have some more things happening between us on Earn Alliance as well in the future. So I just want to let everybody know here who's been listening and listening to all this amazing information, of course, that we've been getting from um, Joan and the House of Boxing team. Do them a favor and, of course, drop them a follow, you guys. You know, Make sure you stay up to date with what they're doing. I'm sure that they'll be pushing the space forward as far as Web3 sports gaming. And um, I do know as well, I'm excited to hear a little bit more about what else you guys are going to be doing with Last. So there's so many things to stay up to date with. The best way to do it is, of course, by following the page and making sure you're part of the communities, you guys. So do it. Do it for sure. And then um, other than that, thank you again to the Earn Alliance page, Ryan. Sorry we had some technical difficulties there, but you know where I'm at and you know what I got to deal with. So it might happen sometimes, guys, but I hope you enjoyed the space. And uh, that'll be pretty much it from me until the next one. But of course, John, I want to give the final statement to you. So feel free to uh, say your goodbyes. If there's anything else you want to say before we wrap it up, feel free to. And then that'll be it. No, thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. And um, we wish a long partnership as well, where we'll be having multiple um, multiple AMAs and multiple interactions with the community going forward. And uh, we we just see a bright future ahead of us and ahead of the Web3, the Web3 community. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. That's it for us. Until next time. Take care. Bye-bye.